Thank you, Vandava. Thank you. And a very, very warm welcome to you all for the first Anukampa End of Rains celebrations today. Um, I must say I'm feeling a bit nervous uh, speaking to a large group <laughs> uh, on Zoom today. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about what we are uh, doing. So traditionally, uh, a Katina ceremony takes place after the end of the Vasa season. So Vasa is the, the monsoon, the rainy season in Southeast Asia. Um, and during the rainy season, the monastics usually stay uh, in their monasteries for three months from July, July August, September. Uh, and at the end of the rains retreat, the lay community organize a Katina ceremony to celebrate the monastics in their lives. Um, and for the first time this year, when Rebel Chanda did the rains retreat in the UK uh, at the Anukampa Vihara, and I wanted to take the opportunity to recognize her presence in the UK. Uh, and also to recognize all the contributions, the hard work she has been doing, um, all the teachings, and um, she does a lot of admin and management work for Anukampa as well. So this is, um, this, yeah. So it, it's a celebration to, to celebrate Venerable Chanda's presence in the UK. And this is not a traditional Katna ceremony today because we need to have four monastics uh, according to the Vinaya for the Katna to be complete. And we have only Venerable Chanda here in UK at the moment. So that's why we call this the end of rains celebration. So a big thank you to Venerable Chanda uh, for all the hard work she's doing for us. Um, and so I have the rope here with me. Uh, this robe has traveled far from Sri Lanka. Uh, my mother arranged it for us. Um, she had gone to many different places to find the right material and the right color and to get it stitched. Uh, and she was very happy to uh, share the offering. And also I must say that uh, this offering is shared by another supporter of Anukampa who likes to remain anonymous. Uh, so it's, um, it's not just me. Uh, who's making this offering today and I would like you all to, uh, to, to participate in this offering. Um, and also I think I should say that, um, so this is going to be an online offering as you can see I'm here in uh, London and Venerable is in Oxford. Uh, we thought of visiting her in Oxford but uh, due to the current uh, coronavirus situation different parts of UK is in different levels of lockdown. So it's not safe for us to visit, but I will arrange the robe and the other requisites to be delivered to her residence next week. Um, I hope I didn't forget anything. Apologies if I did. Um, like I said, I'm feeling a bit nervous <laughs> speaking to a large group. Um, if I missed anything, um, Venerable, please feel free to add anything. That was beautiful, Tehani. Thank you so much. You're, as usual, you know, you convey this beautiful energy and a real sincerity and um, sense of care towards the Sangha and towards the Dhamma. So thank you very much for introducing that. It's really great that you could come and for all your efforts to source this robe, you know, and all the amazing intentions that you've been generating throughout that process. It's not only an offering that you make today, but it's everything that's gone before and also for you, to you for your service to us. Um, Tehani used to be our treasurer, now we have a new treasurer, but she's still on the trust and um, has always been incredibly reliable and um, just a real gem. So I'm so grateful to have such wonderful support. And, uh, and it's because of all of us that we could make today happen. It's not uh, because of me, it's not only my practice. My practice is possible because of your support. So it's really a celebration for the whole community. Uh, so thank you. And uh, I think, shall I, shall I now lead into the next part, Tehani? Um, yes, but I was gonna okay. say, but, uh, yeah. We are okay. ready to hand over to um, Ayan and the Bodhi for the conversation. Yes.
Aya, I think you need to unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. Uh, let me just the gallery view so I can see all of you. Well, it's it's lovely to see so many people turn up to support Aya Chanda's Katina or uh, alms giving offering at the end of her well dedicated rains retreat, and I have to say it's it's um she's a she's quite a gem so it's it's rare to have someone who who will be putting so much time so much effort into offering the dharma and serving the community and into her own practice this is a very skillful balance so that she actually spent three months range retreat in meditation in the the somewhat challenging circumstances is a an awesome Thing. So I'm, I'm really happy that you're part of this and that you can also benefit from her practice and hopefully that's supporting you and that uh, you can support her practice. So it's beautiful symbiosis. So let's have a little bit of time in meditation. So I'd like to invite you to find a, a posture that's comfortable and not too comfortable. So uh, if it's, sofas are not the best places for sitting meditation. So if you have a chair or if you're sitting on a, a mat on the floor. Just take a moment to find enough comfort. We're just going to sit for be just a little short of 20 minutes. And be aware of the seat underneath you, the pressure of your body on the seat. And if you're, you know, it's, I encourage you not to be looking at the screen at this time, you can just close your eyes. You can even um, turn the screen away if that's more helpful. And letting yourself rest fully into this place right here, into this seat. Be aware of your body breathing. If it's helpful, you can take one or two deep breaths. And then just let go into the natural rhythm of the breath. So the, even though we're far apart, the breath connects all of us. It connects all beings, all living beings. Humans, animals, insects, birds, plants. And in a way, the, the whole earth is breathing. So we all breathe together. Our life is interconnected. So just breathing that in, taking that in, that truth of our interbeing. I'd also like to invite you to connect with your, your generous intention in being here today in support of one very noble bhikkhuni who's starting a place in the UK. And, and that's like the, perhaps for you, the out-breath and perhaps for Aichanda and for me also in a way, the in-breath, taking that in. And then as you breathe out, 
or as you breathe in, taking in the blessings of that, of this project, of this intention. Connecting with your heart. Taking in the blessings. And as you breathe out, sharing those blessings for the benefit of all beings. And breathing in, just noticing if there's any obstructions to taking in that, you know, the blessings, the love, the metta, the generosity. See if you can breathe past those obstructions. And breathing out, letting those same qualities radiate out from your heart center in all directions. So you get networked into the field of blessings that you're already part of. Making it more conscious. Breathing in and breathing out.
Over to you, Aitenda. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Ananda Bodhi, for a beautiful meditation. I noticed at first there was a little, little feeling of contraction, just slight contraction, thinking that I can really take in so many blessings just for me. And then I realized it's not about me at all. <laughs> it's just as you beautifully said, you know, it's like a field of blessings that we're all partaking of. And it was very beautiful. So I feel relaxed now. And uh, hopefully you'll feel a little bit more relaxed as well. So the next part of today is to offer you the three refuges and either the five or the eight precepts. So just as Tehani was feeling a little nervous in the beginning, I also feel a little unfamiliar with offering this in a formal way. But I was told by Ajahn Brahm not to worry because this is not a real katina after all. It's an end of reign celebration. Having said which, we will try to do it in the traditional way. And uh, I just wanted to say a few words about what these refuges really mean. Because I think when we think of the word refuge, sometimes we think of it as something outside of ourselves. And of course, to some extent, that, that is the case. We're taking refuge in the Buddha, in the Dhamma, and in the Sangha. And part of that taking refuge is taking refuge in something that we've yet to realize, something we've yet to attain. Yeah? The qualities of a Buddha, the pure wisdom and compassion, the great perfected wisdom and compassion. You know, that we've yet to understand and realize for ourselves. And yet, at the same time, we all have the potential to experience and to develop in our own heart. So the refuges are something external, but also something internal. And as such, these um, by recognizing these three refuges as a source of safety and protection, we can, if you like, um, incline our mind above and beyond ourselves and our own self-imposed limitations to the true source of safety which lies within so by putting this into words it helps to strengthen our commitment you know to aligning our lives with those values with those ideals and the other thing we're going to do is to reconfirm our precepts i think many of you may already be trying to do your best to live on the five precepts and the precepts are always a training. I think this is a really important point. It's not that they're this um, vow that you make, that there's a danger of breaking and thereby being more kind of destined for the lower realms than you were before. <laughs> we don't have that concept of sin in Buddhism. You know, it, it's seen more as a training and that every intention towards um, renewing those precepts, towards developing those precepts, even if we sometimes make some mistakes, that is seen as wholesome karma, wholesome action, yeah? So you can choose to take the five precepts for as long as you want to, for the whole of your life. Or you can choose to take the five precepts for as long as it, you feel able, even if that may only be for today or for the week or the next month, yeah? There may be some aspect of the precepts that you're not fully committed to yet. I know in the West, you know, it's sometimes difficult to understand the precept to abstain from taking alcoholic drinks. You know, we think, well, just a little bit of alcohol shouldn't hurt, right? I want to have a nice glass of wine and, you know, it's a way to celebrate Christmas or celebrate other occasions with my family. But sometimes it might be nice just to decide, okay, let's try. Let's see what it's like to try for a day or a week or even a month to go without that. You know, and even that kind of resolve internally will already have its effect because you're making a commitment to something and then fulfilling that commitment that will give you courage and strength. And you may also, of course, find that your mind is clearer, yeah, brighter, more conducive to developing the meditation. So we're going to offer the five and also traditionally on these um, special Buddhist festivals like today, the Katina ceremony or on Vesak or um, sometimes every fortnight in the Buddhist calendar, people come to the monasteries and decide to take their eight precepts just for the day. I have a friend here in Oxford who's decided to take the eight precepts um, from now on until he actually ordains. 
which could be the next year, it could be longer than that. So these can be an ongoing commitment, but for most of us, I think the eight precepts are usually, unless you're a, an ordained monastic, they're usually something you might do for a few days or one day a month. So the eight precepts are differ from the five in that rather than abstain from sexual misconduct, we observe celibacy. And you also take the training precept not to eat afternoon. So for some of you, that might be too late for today. <laughs> um, actually, it's one o'clock in England. The summertime is still on, so it's the solar noon. So if you haven't um, had your lunch, you could still take the eight precepts today. And then the last one is to abstain. OK, there's two more to abstain from um, going dancing, singing, watching shows. So that for you might mean no TV this evening. You might want to watch a Dhamma movie that might be allowed. But generally speaking, it's a way of inclining our minds within. So we're restraining our senses and simplifying our mind. And then the last one is uh, Oh, and also that includes not wearing jewelry and adornments, yeah? So not beautifying the body with lipstick. And I heard that lipstick wasn't selling very well at the moment anyway, because of the masks that we have to wear. So <laughs> I don't think many of you have a lot of lippy. So that's another one. That's part of that one. And then the last one is um, the eighth one is to abstain from the use of high and luxurious beds or sitting places. And unless you've got a four poster bed, I think the bed that you normally sleep on is probably quite fine. It just means nothing that's sort of extraordinary, you know, so we're not using um, seats or beds to indulge the body, yeah, to escape from some of the, the pain in the body. But we are normal and natural about it, so you don't have to sit on the floor, okay? <laughs> So I'm going to offer these in both English and in Pali. I'll, I'll chant the Pali first. And we were wondering whether to give you a document to follow or not. And we decided that it might be easier just to listen to the precepts being given and to try to follow as best you can in your own time, because nobody's going to hear you anyway. And sometimes it's nice to see the person who's actually offering the precepts. Um, so I'll do it fairly slowly and we'll do it in English as well so you know what you're actually chanting, okay? But before we do that, I'd like to know if there's anybody here who would like to take the eight precepts because it may be that the five will be more suitable for most of us. So if you would like to take the eight, do you think you could put up your little uh, blue hand under the participants button? Aha, there's Deirdre, she's got her hand up. Okay, and anyone else? I think one is good enough. <laughs> That's wonderful. Okay, so we can all be inspired by that. So we'll start by paying homage to the Buddha and then we'll take the three refuges and the five precepts. And after that, I'll do the eight precepts separately. Okay, so if you are taking the eight, you can take the, uh, you can chant the Namo Tassa and the refuges, and then just wait until the five precepts are finished and we'll do the eight precepts separately, okay? Are there any questions before we go into that? Is that clear enough to people? Yeah? Great. And of course, this is entirely optional. So please, if you don't feel that it resonates for you right now, um, just sharing the spirit of it. You don't need to take the precepts to be a good Buddhist or a good person or practice kindness, okay? <clears throat> so I'm going to chant Namo Tassa three times and after that you'll chant it three times. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa
And now we'll do the three refuges. So I'll chant one line at a time and you can chant after me. Buddham Saranam Gachami Dhammam Saranam Gachami Sangham Saranam Gachami Duty Ampi Buddham Saranam Gachami Duty Ampi Dhamham Saranam Gachami Duty Ampi Sangham Saranam Gachami Tati Ampi Buddham Saranam Gachami Tati Ampi Dhamham Saranam Gachami Tati Ampi Sangham Saranam Gachami So what you just chanted means homage to the blessed, the, uh, the noble, the perfectly enlightened one. That's Namo Tassa. And then we chanted, I go to refu for refuge to the Buddha. I go for refuge to the Dhamma. And I go for refuge to the Sangha. And we chanted that three times. So now we're going to chant the five precepts. <clears throat> So I'll do the Pali, and if you are able to, you can follow that. I think uh, our co-hosts have very kindly put the Pali down there in the chat box, so you might be able to find it in there. Otherwise, you can just listen to the words and chant along as best you can. And after the Pali, I'll do the English translation, and you can repeat it for the second time in English, because I think it's very helpful sometimes to to say these things to yourself in your own language so you really understand the meaning. Panati pata we ramani sekapadam samadhyami I undertake the training to abstain from killing or harming living beings. Adinna dana vevamani sekapadam samadhyami And in English, you can repeat after me. I undertake the training to abstain from taking what is not given. Mm 
Kame sume cha chara we vamani se ka patam samadhi ami. I undertake the training to abstain from sexual misconduct. Musa wada we ramani se kapadam samadhi ami. I undertake the training to abstain from false and harmful speech. Sura Mireya Maja Pamadatana Vevamani Sikapatam Samadhi Ami I undertake the training to abstain from alcoholic drink or drugs that cloud the mind and cause heedlessness. Long sentence. <laughs> Wonderful. So the five precepts are complete and I'm going to now offer the eight precepts for those who wish to take them, whether for today or for longer than today. And uh, while I do that, you may wish to close your eyes and just tune in to the, to the goodness of what you've just done, to the beauty of making that commitment to the precepts. And the Buddha said that these precepts, living a virtuous life, leads to anavajasukha, which means the blameless bliss, the bliss of non-remorse, non-regret, knowing that you've done your best. So we're going to do the eight precepts now. Panati pata vevamani sikapatam samadhyami. I undertake the training to abstain from killing or harming living beings. Adinna dana we ramani se kapadam samadhyami. I undertake the training to abstain from taking what is not given. Abramacharya vevamani se kapadam samadhyami. I undertake the training to abstain from any kind of sexual activity. Musawada Ramani Sikapatam Samadhyami.
I undertake the training to abstain from false or harmful speech. Sura Mireya Maja Pamadatana Veva Manisika Padam Samadhi Ami I undertake the training to abstain from alcoholic drink or drugs that cloud the mind and cause heedlessness. Vikala bojana veva mani sekapadam samadhyami. I undertake the training to abstain from eating at the wrong time after solar noon. And I think actually the solar noon changes tomorrow. So from tomorrow it's 12 noon. Natcha gita wadita visukadasana. Mala Ganda Vilepana Dharana Mandana Vipu Sanatana Veramani Sikapatam Samadhyami I undertake the training to abstain from dancing, singing, music, going to see entertainments, wearing jewelry, using perfumes, and beautifying the body with cosmetics. Uchasena Mahasena Weva Mani Sika Padam Samadhyami. I undertake the training to abstain from using high and luxurious sleeping places. So may you keep these precepts for your happiness, for your well being, your blameless prosperity, and for the attainment of Nibbana. Sad, sad, sad. Ooh, well done, well done. <laughs> Lovely. Great. So I hope that worked for most people. You were able to follow. Um, Perhaps you'll be able to, uh, yes, Ananda Bodhi very beautifully wrote in the box there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. My favorite translation too of uh, <laughs> Sadi Sadi. That's great. So you should feel happy to, to take the precepts, to commit to living a life of blamelessness, a life of harmlessness. Yeah. And as I said, you know, even if it can't be perfect, it can never be perfect until we're enlightened. So, you know, you don't lose anything by renewing that commitment. So just make sure you really appreciate every effort you put in and bring it up in your mind at the end of the day. Reflect on the beautiful possible results of your wholesome actions. Sometimes you feel the happiness when you're, um, when you're doing acts of kindness, you know, when you're caring for someone, even just making them a cup of tea. 
And other times we can feel it later. We feel happy that we did the right thing, that we chose to stop for someone on the street perhaps, or we just chose to sacrifice a little bit of our time to listen to somebody else. So bring those things up. And the Buddha says, you know, it's like a, a wise person who lies down or sits down at the end of the day. And this person's um, good deeds, the result of those good deeds covers and overspreads them. Just like the shadow of the mountain covers and overspreads the whole area when the sun goes down behind that mountain. In the same way, the results of your good deeds cover and overspread you. And you have no remorse, no regret. You can go to bed thinking, yes, I've lived a valuable life today. I've done something of worth. You know, it was worth getting up. I made one person's life that little bit uh, less stressful or less um, gloomy, less um, hopeless, you know, by, by just offering support. And that can include your own life too, if you live alone. Great. So the next part of the program is very exciting. It is the offering of the robe. And um, I'd like to hand over to Tehani for this. And she will lead the robe offering ceremony and invite everybody to join in, I think. Thank you, Anubhav. Um, I will put the um, robe offering chant into the chat box now. So you can join me with the chanting. Right. Venerable, all of us here together ask to respectfully offer to the Sangha a robe on the occasion of the end of the Vasa together with all these other requisites. May the Sangha be pleased to receive a robe on the occasion of the end of the Vasa together with all these other requisites for the long lasting benefit and happiness of us all. Sadhu. <laughs> sad, sad, sad. Wonderful. I actually feel as though I've received the robe. <laughs> it's incredible to me that we can share these energies even across a, a virtual platform. Yeah, I feel very touched. And who knows who's going to end up wearing this robe? Perhaps it'll be the first aspirant who comes to ordain. <laughs> so you'll better hurry up before I start wearing it myself. <laughs> Great. So now I'm going to do some blessing chanting for all of you to, um, to share the merits and the happiness of receiving the robe and of the goodness of our lives. <clears throat> Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato. Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa. And I am going to continue, but I would just like to say, um, for those who aren't familiar with the blessing chanting or find it a little bit strange to have somebody chanting in a foreign language, it might be nice to just take this opportunity to meditate and to just see if you can open yourself to receive the blessings. You don't have to understand what it means even but you might be able to just tune into the energy of it and just use it as an opportunity to just feel showered and feel held in this field, yeah? So please close your eyes if, you, if you're not going to chant along and just allow these blessings to soak in, to soak through. 
and to uplift the heart. These are the words of the Buddha, so they carry a certain power. Iti piso bhagavadarahan sama sambudu vicha charana sampano sugato loka vidu anuttaro purisadama sarati sata deva manusanam Buddha Bhagawa Suakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sandipiko Vakaniko Ehipasiko Opanehiko Pachatam Vedita Bhoenyuhiti Supatipano Bhagavato Savakasango Ujupatipano Bhagavato Savakasango Nyaya Patipano Bhagavato Savakasango Samichi Patipano Bhagavato Savakasango Yatitam Chattari Purisa Yugani Yata Purisa Pukala Esa Bhagavato Savakasango Ahuneo Pahuneo Dakineo Anjali Karaneo Anuttaram Punyaketam Lokasati Now we do the Maha Mangala Sutta. Asevana Chapalanam Panditanam Chasevana Puja Chapuja Niyanam Etam Mangalamutamam Patiru Patesawasocha Pobe Chakataponyata the Samma Paniticha Etam Mangalamutamam Bahu Satchan Chasi Pancha Vinayo Chasusi Kito Supasita Chayawacha Etam Mangalamutamam Mata Pitu Upatanam Put Tatara Sasangaho Anakula Chakamata Etam Mangalamutamam Danan Chatam Macharia Chanyata Kanan Chatsangaho Anuajani Kamani Etam Mangalamutamam Arati Virati Papa Majapana Chasanyamo Apamado Chadame Sueta Mangalamutamam Garavo Chanivato Chasantu Ti Chakatan Yuta Kale Nadamma Savana Metam Mangalamutamam Kanti Chaso Vachasata Samananam Chadasanam Kale Nadamma Sakacha Etam Mangalamutamam Tapo Chabram Macharian Charia Sat Chanatasanam Nibbana Satchikiriya Chaitam Mangalamutamam Purta Salokatame Hichit 
Tam Yasana Kampati Asoka Virajam Kemam Etamangala Mutamam Etadisani Katwana Sapatama Parajita Sapata Sotim Gachanti Tante Samangala Mutamanti and now the Charatana Parita, the six verses from the Ratana Sutta. Yam kin chiweta miva itava huramva sage suayam ratanam paditam nano samama titatagatena Idam pipo de ratanam panitam. Etena sa chena suati hotu. Kayam viraka mamatam panitam. Yarajaka sakyamuni samahito. Natena dame na samati kinchi. Idam pita me ratanam panitam. Etena sa chena suati hotu. Yam Buddha seto paravana hi suchim. Samadhi manantarikanyamahu. Samadhi na tena samona vijati. Idam pita me ratanam paritam. Etena sa chena suati hotu. Ye pukala tasatam pasarta chatari etan yugani honti te dakine asugata sasawaka e te sudinani mahapalani itam pisange vatanam panitam. Etena sa chena suati hotu. Ye superyuta marasadalena. Ne kamino gotamasasanam hi. Te pati pata makam pigaya. La da mutane butim bunjamana. Idam pisange vatanam panitam. Etena sa chena suati hotu. Ki nam puranam navam nati sambawam. Virata chita yati ke bawasmim. Te ki na bija vihuli chanda. Ne panti dira yatai ham pati po. Idam pisange vatanam panitam. Etena sa chena suati hotu. So I'm going to end by chanting a little meta chant, not the Karaniya one today, but the Burmese one which I know you all enjoy. So take this as another opportunity to just try and imbibe some of these words of loving kindness and develop that attitude of loving kindness towards whatever you're experiencing right now. Giving it space, allowing it with friendship and kindness just to be. Sabe sata. Sabe pana, sabe buta, sabe pugala, sabe atabawa pariyapana, sabayetiyo. 
Sabay po isa. Sabay ariya. Sabay anawiya. Sabay dewa. Sabay manusa. Sabay wini parika. Awe wa hon tu, abya paja hon tu, ani ga hon tu, suki atanam pavi havan tu, duka mon jan tu, yadalada sampati to. Mawe gachantu kamadaka sadhu 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 <laughs> and you have to do the ha 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 otherwise it doesn't work <laughs> It's contagious, even though I don't hear you. <laughs> Great. So, so far we're all on track, all on time. And it is going to be time now for a tea break. And um, I'm hoping that I have Ananda Bodhi can also have her tea break, which will probably be your breakfast, Aya. And I really just want to thank you for being here for this first part of the day and for joining in with the chanting. I really sensed that I wasn't alone with that, that you were right there chanting with me. And I'm sure that other people could experience double power, at least double power as well. So I'd just like to um, unmute you, Aya, and, and uh, say goodbye. And if you have any last words before you leave, it'd be very nice to hear from you. Thank you. Lovely to be part of this and it's very beautiful and to hear the chanting and the blessings and just to see everyone. I was just looking through and pinning different people so I could see you a little bit more and just wonderful that this is happening, you know, together, all of you, and that, uh, you know, the, the world is a crazy world and we need to bring goodness into it. Love, humour, generosity, it's so, so important, presence, settling, peace, all of those things. So wonderful to just dip into your community like this and just to see what you're all doing even even for moments even if it's just like now while we're together it's it's such an important part of the world and it's such a blessing so thank you thank you thank you and enjoy your cup of tea thank you I uh, and just to say that you are very much a part of this community I mean oh, you yes. me, you're a great source of inspiration and guidance and you know just having that contact with a senior bikini who's had so much training as you have mm -hmm. and um you know who i can take inspiration from is really important so you're very much a part of this community and oh, i'm looking you. forward to the time when you can meet us all in person lovely <laughs> yes yeah and i i Chandra, i also really appreciate your your joyfulness and your levity i think that's such a beautiful gift oh yeah thank you Thank you. I see the same in you, actually. <laughs> I always found Aloka Vihara a very joyful place. And we did a lot of chanting together as well, which was really uplifting. Yeah, something that I think happens perhaps more when bikunis are together. You know, we put a bit of um, a bit of tune into the whole thing, a bit oh, of creativity. Yeah, we, we had some good times there chanting together. <laughs> so look forward to the next time and uh, yeah. wish you a lovely day Aya thank and, you uh, yeah and everyone else uh, a lovely yeah. cup of tea a nice little break yeah, and all the best to all of you yeah bye 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 <laughs> bye bye <laughs>